everyone. I'm Rachel and I'm very happy to welcome you to Spain Awakens and this virtual experience with Torontos in Barcelona. This virtual experience is part of Tickets Awakening Weeks, which is a six week celebration of the reopening of more than 100 museums and attractions in six countries around the world. These venues have worked around the clock to make it safe to visit again and now they're rolling out the welcome mat to you virtually through these online experiences so that everyone can join in on reawakening these cultural institutions worldwide. So this virtual experience will start in just a moment, but since there are still some people joining us, I'll kick off by sharing just some technical information um, about what to expect and how to use Zoom. So first of all, if you have any questions for the artists and performers throughout the show, you can submit them through the Q&A button at the bottom and we'll answer some questions and talk a little bit about the flamenco at the end of the show. Um, do send your questions in through that Q&A button so that we can see them all together at the end. And that's where you can also vote on your favorite uh, questions there so that we ask the best, so we ask the best ones first. Uh, this is a Zoom webinar, so your camera won't be on, but you can use the chat to communicate with your fellow attendees. Um, so do change your settings to all panelists and attendees as who you're sending the, the chat to uh, so that you can all communicate together and, and, and uh, share your experience during the show. Finally, a note that this presentation will be recorded, so we'll be sending the recording out to all registrants in the coming weeks. Um, so now that we're done with the technical stuff, I am very happy to pass it over to Toronto's uh, who are going to delight us with a live flamenco show at this the oldest flamenco venue in Barcelona. Um, so I know I can, can't, couldn't be more excited to, to experience the show. So uh, Toronto's over to you. Luego eso a mí me Oh, 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 oh,
Y a mí me llaman el loco. Y a mí me llamaba. A mí me llamaba el loco. Y porque siempre voy callado llamarme a poquito a poco ay que porque soy un loco oh, 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 oh. Olga, buena bailadora, señora. Sobre mi yunque, ey, tana, mi lágrima, ay, que yo voy más sacando. Ay, como si del hierro.
te dio un tableiro. Ay, y el sitio donde yo tablé. Ay, gana, me daba un ay, 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 y de volverme y juntarme con mi mismo. Dije, cámargame, y un día tan fiesta que yo lo pongo un hoy con mi amor, no también. Cuando salga la luna y tan amiga yo voy a verte Que me alumbra el camino Que el camino me alumbra y tan amiga va a quererte Que 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 que
Hard time. Thank you.
Fabulous. I hope you all enjoyed that remarkable performance as much as I did. Um, now I believe we'll have a little bit of time to go over your questions and to uh, just share a little bit more about the history of Toronto's and the, the dancers here. Um, we might need to give them a moment to catch their breath, um, but uh, Mimo, I believe, is the one who will be, be speaking with us as soon as she's uh, able to, to come back out. So uh, just a moment of patience and then we'll, we'll dive into some of the, the background. Hello. So if you can just uh, grab a mic and then we'll be able to hear you nice and loudly. Talking to the ticket audience. Is that correct? So you're very yes. welcome to the Tablao de Carmen. No, sorry, I have to say again. I am from the Tablao de Carmen, and you're very welcome to Los Tarantos. Now, there are two important Tablaos, flamenco venues, which Tickets um, works with in Barcelona. And we're very happy to have you as an audience to understand what's going on in Barcelona and how we hope it's going to work. So the artist that you've seen in Los Tarantos, which is in the center of the old town of Barcelona in Las Ramblas, and it's been here since 1963, are artists that are from Barcelona. They have been working here for many, many years, and they have also worked in the Tablao de Carmen, which is the other flamenco venue uh, in Montjuic, in the mountain of Montjuic, again um, in the center of Barcelona, near Plaza de España, inside a very famous place called Spanish Village, El Poble Español, which has been there since 1929, was built as a Spanish village, and is now a place where you can see flamenco in the Andalusian quarters. So now I would love to introduce to the artists that you've seen. Ah, genial. I have to speak talking because the artists are getting changed. Um, so I would like to say that Barcelona is a place that considered among the flamenco world as a um, big city where there are a great collective of flamenco artists. They were originally came in the 1800s from all over Spain, from the south of Spain, and they settle here. And their culture, their music has stayed here with them. And it has slightly become the part of the city with a special character, different from the one it, it arrived with, but with the same roots and the same character. So we can say that all these artists have preserved a culture that is very, very live and also has a special touch here in Barcelona. It's a very strong flamenco. Uh, it has a speed that is not typical from other places. And um, it's a very special and uh, communicative art. Although it's also, it happens among them. It's created in between artists and in stages like this one. Not necessarily in big theaters, 
or in big festivals. So we like to explain that when you come to Barcelona and you choose to see flamenco in a place like a tablao, it's, um, it's something that is quite unique. Tablao actually comes after a word which is tabla. Tabla is a piece of wood. It's where I'm standing. So a tablao is a stage made of wood planks and it has become the name of the venue. So Tablao de Carmen and Tablao Los Tarantos are the original places to see flamenco. And it's great that you understand this and that you look for it. We, in places like this one, we make flamenco the way it is. We don't stage it. It's actually how the artists decide to do it. And they interact. One keeps the rhythm. The rhythm is the base of any flamenco and it's the beat that they keep with their hands, with their feet, and also with the box of the guitar. And that's the essence of any flamenco. Yes, you have appreciated with all of them. You know, it's something that um, is very special, very rhythmic, very strong, very authentic, and very real. And after that rhythm comes the rest, the singing. There are lyrics that are traditional lyrics, they know them by heart, they don't work them out as they sing. Actually, they are very old lyrics, some of them are modern, but they, are, they come from a very long tradition, oral tradition. And then the, all the other, what happens is something determined by the rhythm that they choose before they start. There are many different rhythms. You've seen actually one of the strongest, deepest rhythms called Seguirilla. They started with a Seguirilla. Then they did something called Buleria, which is a very beautiful rhythm, typical of these parties. They did a solea, which actually literally means loneliness. And they finished again with a Buleria, which is that kick, you know, they come in and out of the rhythm. So I think now they have time enough to get changed and we am gonna call them by their names to see if they come back and I can introduce them. It's an honor to have seen the show along with you. And I hope that if you come back to Barcelona, you can meet them directly here or in the Tablao de Carmen. Um, thank you so much for being tickets with us. And I'm going to call the artists. Queridos Olga y Luis y Miguelillo y Edu, si podéis venir al Tablao. A los artistas les llama para que os presente directamente. Chiquillos. Venga, Miguel, que os tengo que presentar. I have to introduce you. Os tengo que presentar personalmente a cada uno yo. Sí, mejor. Bueno, como quieras. <laughs> I will introduce to the singer Miguel, el, bueno, yo lo llamo Miguel, Miguel de la Tolea. Uh, Miguel de la Tolea. His, uh, his uh, mother used to dance in the Tablao de Carmen, and la Tolea. And Miguel is one of the greatest singers of the scene. Edu. Cortés is, un, is a very big guitarist. He's the son of another great dancer called Latani, who has a fantastic flamenco school in Barcelona. So Edu Cortés in the guitar. And then Luis y el apellido de Melo. Luis el Granaino. We know his artistic name is Luis el Granaino, which means Luis from Granada. And there's again another family of Barcelona and he's a great singer. Luis el Granaino. And I have the great pleasure to present a dancer who has been in... Eres de Barcelona, Olga? She is from Barcelona, from a neighborhood called San Adrián. And we met her when she was in the beginning, starting to dance. She did dance as the girl in the, in the corpse of dance of the uh, Tablao de Carmen. And she, from there, she has been in all the greatest tablaos of Spain. She has won many, many big prizes in the flamenco dance of the whole of Spain. And she is one of the dancers, the current dancers in Los Tarantos. I would like to say something, Olga, sobre ti. ¿Verdad que tienes un premio de baile? ¿Cuál? Okay, there is a great, one of the biggest prizes in, um, in Spain which is started as a prize for the singing in an area, which is the minor area of Spain, and it's called El Cante de las Minas, El Premio Inter del Cante de las Minas. 
she has won the prize of dancing that they give in this very, very important um, category of flamenco. So she is one of the flamenco winners of the Cante de las Minas, the Trofeo de Cante de las Minas. Um, I don't know what to do right now because they're all here. And it's Olga Llorente, Luis El Granaino, Miguel de la Torea, and Edu Cortés. It's one of the best uh, teams you can put together in Barcelona. And um, we send you all our greetings from here, hoping that you will come back to Barcelona and we'll see a show in Los Tarantos, in La Plaza Real, in the center of Barcelona, or in El Tablao de Carmen, in El Pueblo Español, Spanish Village in Montjuic. Thank you so much for attending this and see you soon. Amazing. And uh, if apparently we are going to stay here. <laughs> Can you hear me okay for the, the Q&A? Yep. So the, the first question is about the music that was, that was performed. Oh, so they can't hear me, okay. Uh, okay, so Gwen will tell them the questions. Great, go ahead. It is a very traditional um, choice of show. Actually, it's, um, they open with La Seguirilla. They did Una Buleria uh, by, as music. And then they did Una Soleá and again La Buleria. Apparently, Olga, if Olga or Edu, you want to speak uh, in English, because the audience is English. So apparently I've been asked, to, but if you can, it will be fantastic, you answer. Great. Sí. <laughs> Okay, so the show that you've seen today eh, is a completely traditional show performance. And it's actually the way it goes is the way you see it in a tablao. Is as they go, what they feel and, and what they want, they choose to express. And I want to ask you, uh, Olga, who made the choice of the rhythms that you were going to that we've seen? O sea, ¿quién ha escogido los palos que habéis, el, el, la sucesión de palos que habéis escogido hoy? Bueno, ha sido un poco, ha sido un poco entre todos, pero bueno, la Yo quería bailar hoy solea porque es uno de los palos con los que yo mejor me siento. O sea, apparently the way they chose is that she said she wanted to dance solea, which is the second dance she's done. Uh, y el, bueno, el primer, el la primero Sevilla. ha sido un Martín Sevilla, ah, Martinete. Ha sido un Martinete, lo que pasa es que, que ha intervenido la guitarra. Que da la... Okay, and the first rhythm usually is a rhythm that is the same bass of rhythm that is called Martinete. And when the guitar comes in, it becomes more a seguirilla. But they correct me, and it's a martinete, which actually is without music. O sea, el martinete es a palo seco. Claro. El martinete is usually singing and rhythm without music. And because there was a guitar, it turned to be a seguirilla. Y la bulería, que es un palo para nosotros con, lo, con el que mejor nos sentimos, ¿no? Y la bulería, it's the... the the happy one, which has a faster beat, and how they feel that they can connect most. So they chose that as an in, interval and at the end. It's usually how it happens. It's a very conventional and very classical choice that they've made. And he's making a point, Edu, that the sort of show that you put together as, a, as an artist on a big theater stage, which Olga is familiar with, 
is, um, has a story and it's much more sophisticated and round and um, sophisticated. But actually, this sort of show that you go and you see very rich themes and very clear one after another, and where the strength of the show depends on the connection of the artist, happens only in a tableau like this. And this is, you know, he makes a point of how different for an artist is to be on a big theater or to be on a place like a tableau. And I have to say that I was lucky enough to see uh, Miguel de la Tolea in, el Royal, in, in the Royal Albert Hall when he was with Joaquin Cortés many years ago. You were very, eras muy joven en el... Sí, sí, yo te vi. De, so it was a surprise to me because I knew him as a boy, as the son of a dancer in the tableau. And he was among, with the George Armani, uh, set up and with Joaquin Cortez walking with a bear, bear, the, the, the snudo, the, 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 only with a skirt and uh, bare torso. And he was one of the singers. Uh, the co they had at least, ¿cuántos músicos había? How many musicians? 14 or 20 musicians, violinists, singers, 20, no? 20. And he was one of the singers. But in Atablao, you can put together the same intensity of show with you know, four artists that you've seen here. It's just like yeah. And apparently when Joaquin Cortés chose, and it happens with all great artists, they go to tablaos to choose an artist of the tablaos. So apparently Joaquin Cortés found Miguel in the tablao de Carmen in, uh, in our place. So, and it happens all the time. Great, great. Um, it happened with Paco de Lucia that chose Monse Cortés um, as a singer to travel with him. So it, it is in places like this. They, they're trying to say that it's very important for them to be in tablaos. And all starts in a tablao. Sí. For, for Edu is his life, is a way of a way of life, a way of life. Nuestra forma de sentir, de, de expresar. Is her way to feel and to express. And is a day is his uh, day to day life. Yeah. Edu actually is a very good musician that has uh, been in ex working along with other sort of musics, not only flamenco, because he's been with other musicians. But he says that flamenco for him is a family, it's in his family, it's in the ambience, it's what his uh, parents do, what his, all his family has always done, how they, how they relate to each other is with flamenco. O sea, the flamenco music, the rhythm, it's always been there. O sea, it's something that has to do with his day-to-day, second-to-second moment of life. Okay, he is making a point that um, to the audience of tickets that it doesn't stay in a in such a simple thing as buying a ticket and seeing a show like the one you've seen. It's actually the consequence of belonging to a very ancient and um, old way that. All these people, gypsies in their Spanish territory, have done for many, many, many centuries. Is what comes after them feeling and being the way they are and surviving the, the many years and through the time. So it's actually not something that they put together, it's something where they come from. And because they do it here, you have access to this. But in reality, it's something that they have and they share. O sea, lo tenéis y lo compartís, pero es algo que viene de lejos. 
So this, this is, they're very uh, keen to express this because they, they don't make a living um, putting together a nice performance. It's actually they're sharing something that they have inside. O sea, que compartís algo que tenéis dentro y que no es algo que habéis preparado para vender y cobrar. No. Llevo desde los... Empecé con cinco años. She started when she was five years old. Y... Llevo desde los quince trabajando profesionalmente. She started working professionally when she was fifteen. Y bueno, creo que es eh, todos los, toda la, 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 los bailes, las danzas, tienen que tener un, un eh, para que tengan una calidad, tienen que tener un, un estudio y realmente es, o sea, es difícil. Todo con calidad es difícil. O sea, She says that all dances have, have to be studied. And The, to keep a high quality in any performance and in the way she dances, you have to work very hard and constantly. That is, it's difficult. You cannot just have it. In, her, in dance, you have to stay with the dance always and working alone, feeling it and working. Son muchas horas diariamente que tienes que estar entrenando, preparándote desde, yo desde los cinco años en la escuela de, de la tani. She says that from five years old she has been working in, in Tani's, in his mother's, in Edu's mother's school, la Tani, uh, non-stop for many, many hours, um, during many, every day, every day. Y creo que había una doble pregunta, ¿no? O sea, ¿desde cuándo bailaba y si lo consideraba difícil, no? Sí, she considers it's, 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 a, it's definitely very difficult art. ¿Tienes una última pregunta? <laughs> Agua. El fado portugués y la... Esta la tiene que contestar. No hay muchas. No hay muchas porque los melismas son los mismos. ¿Los? Los melismas. Bueno, las melodías. Apparently, the melodies are very much the same. They are called... Mel, me, ¿Cómo lo llamas? Melismas. You know, the melismas are very much the same. So there's not such a very, very big, big difference melodically. Now, I've never heard of fados being danced. ¿Se, ¿Se bailan los fados? Sí, sí, el fado de portugués. There is an artist called Salvador Sobral. Anda, pero si want, claro, el, el, el que toca el pianista. He's a very, uh, he's a great singer and musician who was in Eurovision, a very young uh, singer and pianist, with his sister. So they're working together in a, in a project. So you're working together, fado, you know, this father musician and Edu. So, it, and it can connect very well, and there is a encounter point. So, probably the only difference is that fado that is not danced. No lo bailan el fado. It's only music. <laughs> well, we... <laughs> we, had, we had also a very fado, a very good fado musician that came to the tablao and played music with uh, all the flamenco artist. Se llamaba um, a very famous girl singer. So music, musically, is well connected. El fado y el flamenco. Fabulous. And uh, all the questions that we have time for today. <laughs> yes, please endorse, you know, this um, effort and uh, help the tablaos to come back to its reality by flying to Barcelona and being here and joining all these Flamenco artists, so we can keep on going. We can keep on going with the rhythm.
Yes, thank you so much uh, for, for this experience. I know everyone hopes that they can come and visit soon. Um, you can find more about the Tickets Awakening Weeks at tickets.com slash blog slash awakening weeks, which has information about how you can visit Toronto's and how you can experience the reawakening in person around the world, as well as upcoming virtual experiences we have in the next three weeks, including the Netherlands next week. So thank you so much again to Toronto's. That uh, was such a magnificent show. Uh, we're looking forward to finding more ways to culture with everyone again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.